Hello, welcome to this module on international financial management. In this chapter, we're going to look at global financial markets and also how does it impact you personally as well as your business. So first of all, um, we recognize that there are many different markets all over the world. And in particular, we're focused on stock markets. So there are many um, exchanges um, in foreign countries and the number of exchanges um, continue to increase and also the amount of stocks that are available to trade on these foreign exchanges also increase, making them a lot more competitive to the US stock market. Um, stock exchanges are important because they help the flow of capital to go between countries. So if a United States company find a foreign market attractive and they want to expand into the foreign market, they can now much they can now raise money in the in the foreign market much easier and build the facilities that they need in the foreign market. The same goes true for a foreign companies that want to invest in the US. So having exchanges um, that are available to both domestic and foreign investors is a very important part of a, of a country's economic development. This is particularly true for um, developing countries. Um, when we look at different exchanges, what I want, what we should focus on are some of the differences. Um, the obvious difference include the market structure, meaning whether or not it's a dealer market versus a broker market, um, whether most of the trading occur electronically or physically, um, who are allowed to trade on this market. So the regulation, what are the roles of the government versus the exchange themselves, um, what are legal, what are not legal, and also on trading rules. Um, the, uh, some of these um, differences vary quickly from country to country. For example, some countries have restriction on ownership. They limit the number of shares or percentage of shares that a foreign investor can hold in a particular con uh, con uh, company. So a lot of these um, differences and regulations and rules are very important and you really want to get to know them very well before you either invest in the country as an investor or enter into a market as a business. International finance is also important for individuals. Um, think about what you may want to do. Let's say you want to go on a trip to Mexico or you want to go study abroad uh, in another country. That actually involves international finance. Since you are in the business school, these are questions that your friends and fellow students may ask you. So if you want to go to Mexico, let's say you have saved up $1,000, how many pesos can you exchange that for and therefore how much can you spend in Mexico? Um, same thing if you are thinking about doing a study abroad. Let's say the school says that the tuition is going to be 1 million yen. What does that mean? How much that can, that translate into U.S. currencies? Um, nowadays, that's relatively easy to do. You can go to a currency converter, um, and there are many of them available on the internet. But it's also useful to understand besides exactly how much money is can be converted today, what can you expect to happen? Um, particularly, for example, if you are studying abroad. Um, if you are going to be there for six months or a year, will your exchange rate change over time and how may that change impact you? To answer those bigger questions of what do we expect interest rate to um, evolve over time, we need to take a deeper look at how ex foreign exchanges are traded and the underpinning economic relationships between um, US dollars and foreign currency. So Forex is the name that is used for foreign exchange trading. So foreign exchange is the actually one of the largest financial market in the world because in addition to companies exchanging money, you also have national government changing money. So if you think about financial markets, foreign exchange market is the largest. Um, and because it involves all the countries in the world, the foreign exchange market never stops. Trading occurs 24-7 and is over the counter and in this case over the internet 
which means that um, it's all dealer based. So there's this uh, there's no um, the foreign exchange market is not an auction market. It's a dealer market. So if you want to buy foreign currency in large quantity, uh, if you're a trader, you you look at all the offers that are available from various dealers. Uh, the most common currencies that are traded include the U.S. dollar. British pound, Japanese yen, and the euro. So th these are the symbols that you may see in foreign exchange currency. And the quotation, if you want to buy currency, you may be given one or two in one or two ways. Um, one is a direct quote. A direct quote is from a US perspective. This is how much US dollar you get per one foreign currency. And indirect quote is the inwards. So indirect quote is the number of units of foreign currency per US dollars. So because they're inverse of each other, you literally can write it in a mathematical format. So the direct quote is one over the indirect quote. So they're exactly the inverse of each other. Here is a snapshot of various currency trading at today's exchange rate. And you, you'll notice that some of these are quoted in direct quotes and others are quoted in indirect quotes. So remember that direct quote is one, uh, is the amount of US dollars per foreign, foreign currency. So here we have one Canadian dollar. So this is the foreign currency and it is worth 74 0.62 American um, dollars. So this is a direct quote. So this is the US dollar per foreign currency. So again, it's true here. One British pound is $1.2442. So the easiest way to see whether it's a direct or indirect quote is to see which one, um, which number is not a single round number. So if the US dollar is not a round number, so in this case is 1.2442, that means this is a direct pull. Um, on the other hand, if you have the foreign currency that is not in the whole dollar, so in here, the British pound is a whole pound, the Japanese yen here, this is an indirect quote. This is the number of foreign currency per US dollar. So the Japanese yen is indirect because it says it takes 110.751 yen to buy one US dollar. So this is an indirect quote. Uh, the Chinese yuan is a direct quote. quote. Um, it, one Chinese yuan will give you 0 0.1451 US dollars. So in this particular graph, um, all the currency except Japanese yen is in direct quote and the Japanese yen is an indirect quote. Now let's take a look at the example that we posted earlier and use the information we have to answer those questions. Remember that you want to find out how many Mexican pesos you'll get if you have $1,000. In the graph that we just saw, we, saw, we see that one Mexican peso is equal to 0 0.0531 US dollars. So if you have $1,000, um, this is a direct quote, so to use that, you can do the cost multiplication. So if you have $1,000 and each dollar um, and one maximum peso can translate into 0 0.0531 US dollars, you can find the Mexican peso you can get. So remember that this formula works when this is a direct quote. So the amount of peso you'll get is $1,000 divided by the direct quote, or you can get 18,832 pesos. Um, and this is also an easy way to check your calculation because it's obvious in this example that peso is worth a lot less than a dollar. So um, because we only need a little over five cents, 5.31 cents US dollars to buy a peso. So when you convert the thousand dollars, you should get a lot more peso than a thousand. So here we can we confirm that we get 18,832 peso. Our next example is to study a board in Japan. Remember that the quote you were given was 1 million yen in um, tuition. So the question is, how much would that be in US dollars? Again, from the table we have, we saw that um, we we're given an indirect quote of 110.75 yen translate into one US dollars. So 
since this is an indirect quote and we know that yen is worth a lot less than dollar. So after we do the conversion, we should have um, the tuition in dollar amount that's less than a million yen. So we take the 1 million yen divided by the indirect quote. So we have yen divided by yen and that give us US dollars. So that translates to about 9,000, um, a little over $9,000 in tuition. Okay. We'll end this um, module, uh, this section here. In the next section, we'll talk about cross rates.